Hey guys, it's Mattpedia. Today I want to talk about the concept of treating your daily health and fitness and whatever as part of your hygiene routine. So it's undeniable. No one argues that you need to take care of your teeth and brush them and all of that or else they're going to rot and get cavities and decay and you're not going to have teeth later on in life. Somehow along the way, the idea of taking care of your body so that it's not worn down and having issues later in life has become politicized and now we have this movement that is against being healthy. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about how it's not super difficult and you don't need to live at the gym. You don't need to go to the gym for five or six hours a day. You don't need to run on a treadmill forever. You don't need all these ridiculous supplements. So the same way that we shower every day or every other day and we brush our teeth, we should be doing something with our bodies that's actually a little bit physical. Maybe not every day, depending on how intense you get, but like every other day is a good start. I'm still just going to the gym every other day because I need the day in between to recover. But there are plenty of exercises that you can do at home that are quick and easy. There's thousands and thousands of videos on YouTube that can help you out. If you can find any weights in the barren wastelands that are the fitness departments in any store like Walmart or Kmart or Target, then good luck to you. But there should be something that you can do to just stay active. If it's running or biking or whatever, it's better than nothing, but it's not great because our bodies are meant to be able to do that task. I'm not saying that everyone should be able to sprint a 400 and be fine. But our bodies as humans, upright walking homo sapiens, are meant to be able to run, jump, chase, escape, all the stuff naturally. Therefore, it's not a very strenuous activity. Because if running away from a predator is as, as strenuous as lifting a weight over your head or something, we would all be extinct because we wouldn't be able to do it because it would be too hard. So our bodies, as a result, are very efficient at turning... ATP from the muscles into energy that we can use to run. So if you are running and biking and swimming and doing any cardio event as your main form of fitness, that's great. And you're probably pretty healthy and have a big heart and all that and all the health benefits that go with it. But every time you get better at running or whatever cardio, it's going to burn fewer calories. So you have to run longer to burn the same amount of calories which is why I think this misunderstanding of having to spend eight hours at the gym to burn fat and calories has come around. Because you can burn like 300 calories in an hour of running on a treadmill, but then if you look at a package of Pop-Tarts, the two Pop-Tarts are like 290 calories right there. So I am not going to spend an hour running at the gym so I can burn off a pack of Pop-Tarts that I'm going to eat in 18 seconds. If you would like to do that, you can. I'm not here to like bash anyone's fitness or choice not to do fitness, but I just want to inform and kind of dispel some of these rumors. I'll admit maybe in the beginning I was probably bashing people. I apologize if that's offensive, but you'll get more and more efficient at cardio and it will become less and less of a good way to stay in shape if you don't also pair the cardio with doing something at home. If you want to be on a kind of an eating schedule or a diet at home and then do cardio, then that could work together. I'm not a fitness expert or anything. I just have spent a lot of time trying to work out and figure out what works the best for me. And in the path of doing that, I've seen a lot of stupid bullshit. So I have my own pot belly that I'm working on. I am just here to help someone else start off further down the line than I did when I started. So there are some fitness channels that you can look into. If you wanted to look at Starting Strength or Mark Ripito, that's a good one. <clears throat> it's the same guy, I think, because he's on Starting Strength now. He changed his channel name. Meg Squats is good. Um, has exercises for women specifically. Buff Dudes is pretty good. Uh, Jeff Cavalier and Athlean and X is a good option. I'm sure that no one is coming to my channel to look for recommendations of these like million-plus subscriber channels. But if you have no clue where to go and you ended up here, there's some... Oh, Jeff Neppard is good too. Neppard? Neppard? Jeff something. I don't know. He's a fitness guy. Um, but I just want to get you started and have you start looking out there. If the exercise seems ridiculous, 
it probably is stupid bullshit waste of time stuff there is an issue with a lot of people have just become a fitness youtuber and they're just like oh uh what do i have around the house especially with the quarantine people have been like oh darn i don't have a job and everything is closed uh i'll become a fitness youtuber what do i have laying around the house oh okay i have uh my kettlebell everyone here's a new fitness video that i worked out we're gonna do kettlebell swirls and we're gonna do this for uh 18 minutes that's that's a good number we're gonna do kettlebell swirls for 18 minutes and this is gonna really work out your core because everyone is obsessed with their core and getting toned those are buzzwords they don't really mean anything I imagine if they're trying to work your core, they're talking about stabilizing your spine and your abdominal muscles, but they just say core is like this catch-all phrase because they know it's like the new hot thing to say. So watch out for stupid bullshit like that. Anything involving balancing on a ball is stupid and will just hurt you more often than not, especially if you're just getting started. Most of CrossFit is complete bullshit. Just stay away from it. CrossFit is just like, should be just renamed to extreme cardio because that's really what it is. And they're doing a bunch of crazy nonsense as fast as they can, like they're on one of those weird game shows. And no exercise should have you constantly switching to new things for it to stay interesting because exercising isn't supposed to be interesting or fun or creative. It's just maintenance of your body. When you go to the auto shop to have your car like repaired, they're not doing like crazy new interesting techniques to change your oil. They're just changing your oil. That's what it is. Keep it simple. The more complicated and stupid it seems, it's probably nothing. If it involves stretchy elastic bands, it's bullshit. If it involves lifting a really light weight, like 10 pounds or less, just like a ton of times, it's bullshit. It's not doing anything. Also, all these gyms like your Planet Fitness, uh, Experience Fitness, that's probably more of a local chain here in Wisconsin, Anytime Fitness, they offer like personal trainer lessons. They give you like a free one when you come in. And in my experience, all those have just been like 45 minutes of complete like meme bullshit, stupid exercises. Um, if you tell them specifically what you're looking for, they might have someone that can do it. When I told them I was looking for something more like weight lifting oriented, they they got a guy that like did weight stuff. Um, but the first time I was in there, I was telling them how I wanted to squat two of the big plates on each side, which is 225 pounds but I was worried about my spine. So then my personal training session for free with the guy was 45 minutes of doing all the machine stuff, which is not like machines are kind of a waste of time. They're good for very specific. After you've done all the baseline work and you're like more advanced, you can do machines that target one specific muscle. But the guy took me to all the machines and did like complete baby weight and had me do like 45 reps of like a five pound like curl of this. And that's nothing. If you can't lift five pounds, then there's a greater issue here. But if it's a weight that you can comfortably lift and the only time you get tired is because of like minutes of doing it, then it's not exercise. Then you're just wearing yourself out. You might as well just go for a jog at that point. Like think about when you are laying in bed and you're holding your phone like this and you're on your back and your arms get tired from holding your phone up because you're just dumb and won't go to sleep at two in the morning and you're just like this in bed and then you drop your phone on your face by mistake and your arms feel that like burn. Are you exercising? Is that exercise? No. Your arms are just tired because they've been holding this position under their own weight for an extended period of time. The same way that like I could lift this 15 pound kettlebell like this for a few minutes and my arm would get tired, but my arm would probably get tired if I was just doing this for 15 minutes too, because it's just a repetitive exercise. And my body is like, oh, the arm is moving. We have to like send things over there to make it operate. But comfortably operating your muscles is not exercise. It's just wasting time. So again, I think that's where it comes back to um, people think you have to be in the gym for a really long time because of all these stupid exercises people have made up to try and stay relevant in a scene where the correct information to give someone is so quick and simple that they don't really need a trainer or a personal trainer or a million f fucking fitness YouTubers all giving different advice. So there's like eight exercises that you can just do that get the job done and it all involves pretty much a barbell and then you can just 
<clears throat> bench press, squat, overhead press, deadlift, and barbell row, and clean and press, and then you're good. And you just do those eight things. I don't know if that was eight. I don't know. I'm not super paying attention. But if you just do those things, that is your exercise. You don't need to switch it up. You don't need to stay interesting. You just do those things. Do four on one day, take a day off. Do four on the next day, take a day off. You don't need any of these supplements. You don't need pre-workout. You don't need the shaker bottle in the gym with the in the middle of the workout fucking potion that everyone's trying to sell you. If you thought Big Pharma was bad, uh, you're going to have your mind blown when you see all these bullshit made up fitness industry supplements that they're trying to put in everything that they're trying to sell you. And they're like, they're all called something ridiculous. They're called like animal instinct. And it's like just a ginseng pill that you take, or there's like the shredder and it's just powder that you take before you like, none of this is real. They could be just putting minute made lemonade in a thing and selling it to you. And you wouldn't know because they use all these compliment, like complicated terms and words. And they're like protein synthesis and BCAA amino up amino acid uptake receptors. And it's going to really like, it's not, it's just, just, work out then come home and have some whey protein if you're trying to actually build muscle otherwise just work out and then come home and have some water and probably eat something that isn't junk and then take a shower and you're good again the more overcomplicated bullshit stuff they try to put into it as a beginner they're trying to trick you into doing stuff that's unnecessary into buying things that are unnecessary into paying for their oh that's another thing like if they want you to pay for their special course, it's probably bullshit because you can find it online for free. You can go to the library for free. There's thousands of YouTube videos out there. You don't need to pay anyone for anything. You don't need a personal trainer. Just use the power of the internet. We have it all right here. There's plenty of workouts you can do at home with just one of these. It's just right there. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I can't make you, but it's just a good idea for everyone to have something that they can do to keep active because it's going to help you out in the long run because you don't want to be obese and old because getting old sucks enough on its own that being obese, like my joints hurt and I'm 31 and I can't even imagine being old and having sore joints and then also being obese and having like sore knees and ankles and all that other stuff. Um, Additionally, I feel like I'm super lucky to have a body that works and have two two functioning arms, two legs, a spine that's not broken despite what I've been through. There are people out there that are paraplegic, quadriplegic, have muscular dystrophy, have uh, multiple sclerosis. They have other things that have like stolen their body from them and there's nothing that they can do. No amount of exercise, even if they could do it, will ever get that back. And that's just a tragedy. I feel like I'm lucky enough to have a body that works. I just got a good draw when I was born um, that I'm like spitting in the face of all those people because I bet any one of those people would rather have a functioning body than not. And to not be thankful for what I have and to disrespect it by just running it into the ground and not taking care of it would embarrass me. Hi, Jack. Welcome. Welcome to the video. We're talking about how important it is to exercise. Um, I know that sounds a little harsh, but that's just how I feel. I don't hate people that are overweight or anything. I just, I'm very conscious of what I'm doing with my own body and I want to make sure that I take care of it. Um, oh, okay. Here, come over. There you go. Ow. All right. You made it. Great. Welcome. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, also, if you don't want to work out, don't just own it. Like in my previous video where I was talking about, um, just being honest with yourself, everyone has a reason why they couldn't work out. And the important thing is that some people still do. So like I've had a broken spine and I've had spine surgery. I have avascular necrosis in my right hip, which means it's not getting enough blood flow. And sometimes it just hurts for no reason. I can't do anything about it. Um, I also have tuberculosis. Yes, I do. I'm one of the six people in Wisconsin that has it. I have my own little like tuberculosis identification card that I have to keep on me at all times. Um, and I have ulcerative colitis and I had um, hemorrhagic anemia for a while too, where I would 
literally I would get up to walk across the room and my legs would ache and burn and be tired. And I felt like I was going to pass out because I just didn't have enough blood in my body. So even despite these things, I have continued to work out because it's important. I'm not trying to say that I'm better than anyone else who doesn't work out, but I have what six or seven reasons not to work out. And I still do because it's just important. I already have all of that underlying stuff going on. To be obese on top of all that would just be very, very hard. And I saw firsthand uh, with my mom one time, she was overweight and had cancer. And it was just her and I at home. She was still able to walk at that point, but she fell and couldn't get up. And I was, I was like 12 or 13. So I was like a 13-year-old kid, 12-year-old kid, boy, whatever, young man. I was like 5'10". I was always pretty tall. I was pretty big. And like she was, I couldn't help her get off the ground. Like her and I together were not enough strength to lift her off the ground. And I just never want to be so heavy that like Alyssa couldn't help me if I fell and like broke my leg. Or if my avascular necrosis ever gets so bad in my hip that I can't operate and need help or need her to help me with daily things. I don't want to be bigger and be a burden or harder for her to help or like it's just there's so much that goes into it there's so many things that are easier when you're not overweight that's not to say that people that are super power lifters aren't unhealthy in their own right like we talked about the spectrum like the bell curve there are people that are like anorexic and are like 60 pounds over here and that's unhealthy then there are the obese people that are super overweight and there's the power lifters that are the same thing that are like lifting 12, 1200 pounds and they're eating a ton of calories a day and they're, but they're doing that for competition. They've sacrificed health for sport. It's a little bit different. They, tr- they do live in the gym. They do focus entirely on it. It's like their thing and they want to do that. That's fine. But that I just want to point out so that no one can come in and say like, Oh, well power lifters are unhealthy too. Sure. They can get to that point. When you get into the like very, very upper 1% where you actually start needing supplements and all this extra shit, then I think it starts to wear you down too. Because the human body, regardless if it's fat or muscle, isn't meant to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of meat on it at all times. Like your skeletal system can only support so much, whether it's fat or muscle or whatever. Um, So when you get these like massive half Thor Bjornsson like bodybuilders that still weigh like 300 pounds, but it's 300 pounds of muscle. It's still a lot for your body to be under. Um, I don't know if I would call him like obese or whatever, because I'm not learned enough to like discuss what his health may or may not be. Um, But I'm just, I'm not trying to advocate that everyone like go out and try to be like that. Just so we're clear on the bell curve thing with excuses. Like most people live here. There are people that can just eat, try to eat healthy and still gain weight. But keep in mind, that's going to be 1% to 2% of the population. So chances are it's not you. And over here, the people that can just eat whatever, they can like wolf down 16 like Big Macs and not gain a pound and they burn it off. That's way over here on the other end. Those are people that we're not going to bother talking about because we're all mostly here in the middle. So chronically in health reporting, fitness reporting, whatever, people under report what they take in in a day. So if you actually ate 2,500 calories, you might only report 1,700. And that is where it makes a huge difference because you can say, oh, I only eat 1,700 calories a day. I don't know why I'm getting big because you're not, people aren't thinking of every single thing they ate and every single thing they drank. And it comes in every single time that there's a report on or any kind of like long-term study of people. It just happens. It's human nature to downplay the bad and play up the good. So they'll say, oh, I didn't, I only ate 1,700 calories, but I walked for, I don't know, an hour. And it might have only been 20 minutes, but they play it up. So chances are your body isn't actively working against you to turn nothing into fat and turn exercise into nothing. It's just that you're not truly reporting or understanding what you've eaten in calories or how long you've worked out or all of this. And it just, you fall in to the big bump in the middle where we have regular metabolisms and our bodies function normally. All the thyroid issues and things that people 
try to blame it on. It may be the case, but also everyone, like I said, everyone has a reason why they shouldn't go to the gym, but people still go. So if you want to blame your thyroid, then you can, but just keep in mind that you're pro you're, you could be lying to yourself. Um, if it were true that a human body could take 800 calories a day and somehow still be obese and turn that into fat storage somehow, instead of just burning through it, then the military and all the humanitarian efforts around the world, science, whatever, people would be coming to your door to get your DNA so they could clone it and put it in people so that we could end world hunger. But since that's not happening, I don't think that's true. So just watch what you eat, be more mindful. Um, you can still eat the things that you like. Like diets fail because people try to make a snap change in their life instead of just doing gradual changes over time. And a diet isn't a thing that you do for three months and stop. It's a conscious habit of healthy eating and choosing what you're going to do. If I have like a bear claw or something for breakfast, then I'm not going to have a sweet tea for lunch because I had a bunch of sugar already. You just balance out. If I do this, then I shouldn't do this. If I have something here that's not good for me, then I won't have something later that's not good for me. If I have a soda at the restaurant, then I'm not going to have, you know, a Starbucks, whatever, a Chino later. Like, it's just a, about balancing and being mindful of what you've already had and then playing around with what you should have for the rest of the day. All these diets also try to, like, really overcomplicate everything with points and all this other bullshit and, like, um, I knew someone that was on like the Weight Watchers thing. Now they changed their name to WW, but like whatever, we all know what you really are, Weight Watchers. Um, and it was like you had a point system of how many points a day that you could use. But then like certain salad dressings, if it was like it was like light salad dressing, it was no points. But like salad dressing is horrible for you. <clears throat> but people think that if you have a salad and put salad dressing on it, it's not bad for you. But like. There's so many things that are mismarketed. Like yogurt is just melted ice cream. If you look at the yogurt label on most yogurts and then look at ice cream, it's pretty much the same shit. But here in America, we've been lied to and are mismarketed and shown that yogurt is healthy. And there's always like a white woman on the label like, wow, my yogurt. And she's like laughing at the yogurt because it's so healthy. So... Um, anything that says light on it is probably not actually really that healthy. If there's an advertisement or on the label or whatever that has a white woman laughing at food, that food is not healthy. They're trying to trick you into thinking it's healthy because she thinks it's funny. I don't know how funny equals good for you. Um, if you're going to have a soda, just have a soda. If you're not going to have a soda, don't have a soda. But don't have diet soda. Diet soda is like the biggest con that's ever been played on the human race because it's just taking out so they can like write zero sugar on the label and then they just take sugar out and put in some other horrible shit that like should never be in the human body either it's not any better for you are there have been multiple studies that have hypothesized that it's possibly worse for you so um i know that diabetic people can't have like the full sugar whatever and they prefer the diet so like that's separate obviously you have a reason to not do that but it's more so like the classic of like having a supersized big mac with a large fry and then like a diet coke like that's not harming you so have a soda or don't have a soda diet is just a trick to make us feel like we're not having something that's as bad as it is in weight watchers points a diet soda is zero like that's not true caramel coloring is terrible for you all of the like corn syrup and the like all of that shit in there is not good for you. So saying that it's only zero points is like, I don't know if like the soda companies paid them off to like have that in there. Like it shouldn't be like, if you're going to advocate for weight watchers and like healthy eating and all the stuff, then you should be true to the facts and not say that diet soda is zero points. This video was kind of all over the place, but I have a lot to say on the topic, I guess. Most of it comes back to just misinformation, lying to the public, um, being underhanded, trying to trick us into thinking it's more complicated than it really is. So if you want to be healthy, good luck. I'm happy to talk about it more. Um, I tried to be as unabrasive as I could. 
uh, with regards to like being overweight and all that. I don't hate anyone who's overweight. I just want to talk about it and there's not really a way to talk about it without just getting right in there and doing it. Um, so thank you for coming. Be good, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.